So OpenAI came out with a thing called Deep Research. You might have heard of it. Yeah, it's kind of amazing. I've been using it, but you know what's not amazing? It's price tag. If you wanna use this sucker, you have to be a ChatGPT Pro user, which is $200 a month. Now I pay for that because I wanna play with stuff, but I want you to be able to play with stuff too. <laughs> so I was scrolling through Twitter and I found this guy's tweet. David, no, not that David. David came up with his own open source implementation of deep research. Essentially, you get the same capability without paying 200 bucks. I have to try this. So you and me, we're gonna try it right now. I'll show you how to set it up, we'll do it together, and we'll do a little bit of side-by-side -side comparing OpenAI's deep research to, well, <laughs> open source deep research. Keeping in mind, this deep research is using OpenAI uh, many three, oh, oh, I can't even say the thing. OpenAI mini three high, it's the dumbest name ever, I can't remember anything. It's using that. Get your coffee ready. <laughs> let's get started. Now, before we go crazy, let's talk about what is this deep research thing. Well, normally with AI, we get very, very quick answers, just blah, blah, and it's, it, they're okay answers, right? Like, it, it's good. But with this, with deep research, it's doing what it says. It's doing some deep research. It'll take five to 30 minutes to do a deep dive, providing, I think people say PhD quality research. So it would take a normal person or a normal PhD person hours or days to research a topic. Like, I'm talking in depth, like going out to web pages, reading pages, coming back and referencing others and quoting and citations, all that nerdy stuff. It does that in 30 minutes. <laughs> I was talking with my producer, Alex, and we're like, you know, I love it when it takes longer to answer me, like AI. Like, you know, we're all bragging about, oh, uh, AI, this is fast, this is so fast. I love it when it takes longer. I feel like it thought more about something. I feel like it's giving me a well-rounded answer. It's got multi-step reasoning. It's like going out to web pages, doing some data analysis, doing another search. It's kind of thinking like a human. Many people are thinking this is the first real step to AGI. And one very annoying thing about AI and the answers it gives us is we can't really trust it. Like even ChatGPT is like, yeah, um, sometimes we get stuff wrong. <laughs> so what's really cool about the research is that it has citations. For every, well, for most of the things it says, it says, hey, don't take my word for it. Here's the link right here. That's pretty killer. And this sucker is multimodal, which you don't, if you don't know what that means, it can look at pictures, it can look at text, it can look at PDFs, it can process all of this, these types of data. So tell you what, right now, let's try a, a little deep research. I almost said deep search. Deep seek, deep research. I'll click on my deep research button here and I'll search for a hard hitting topic. Research which animal is better, cats or dogs? Give me a thorough answer, a definitive answer based on science. Now what's cool is it won't just like go off to the races going, okay, got enough context. It will ask me for more context. This is also gonna be available in the open source version of this. So we're getting to that here in a moment. I'll just say all of the above. Now I will say sometimes it will just kind of get stuck here and not do anything. And I'll be like, hey bro, you good? And he won't be, kind of like what he's doing now. Oh wait, okay, there we go. So it's starting the research task now. It should even pull up a little tab on the side, on the right, and show me what it's thinking any day now. I'll tell you what, we'll let that sit here. I know you wanna know the answer. You're gonna watch and wait, aren't you? I'm not, I'm not even gonna put timestamps. You're gonna have to watch the entire video. But now let's check out this open source thing. Again, this ChatGPT deep research right now costs 200 bucks. This guy's like, nah, all you're gonna need is a ChatGPT or OpenAI API key, which is not free, but it's significantly cheaper than 200 bucks a month. It's pay as you go. And he even has a nice little diagram here. Essentially, here is the thought process. It's using what's called SERP queries, which I just found out because I started playing with Crew AI. If you haven't played with that, oh my gosh, video coming soon. It's so much, it's a big world. And this will also be using the O3 Mini High. I think I got it this time. So let's go to the GitHub and get this set up. It's actually really quick to get this set up. We're really only gonna need two things, well, three things. We'll need a Firecrawl API, which is free, don't worry, and an OpenAI API. We'll also need a Node.js environment, but we're gonna do that inside of a Docker container because you know how I roll. Also, I'm pretty new to Firecrawl API. <laughs> this thing's amazing. They do have a hosted option, which is free. Well, up to 500 credits. I'll get logged in real quick with my Google account. And seriously, it's so easy to get this API key because right when you log in, it's just sitting right here, ready for you to copy it. So make sure you have that. And then for the OpenAI API key, you'll need to get set up with a account with Open API, <laughs> Open API, Open AI. You'll go to platform.openai.com. 
it will get logged in or sign up. Normally, I think it's connected to your chat GPT uh, if you already have a subscription, but the 20 bucks a month or whatever you pay does not include this. This API usage will be pay as you go, which if you're just doing this real quick for a few things, it's gonna be pennies. If you're doing crazy stuff, well, it's gonna cost you crazy money, but we're not doing anything crazy right now. But once you're logged in and you have a credit card, you can go grab your API keys. I'm gonna create one right now. Now with both of our keys ready to go, we can now set up our Docker environment. Now you don't have to do it with Docker. If you prefer, uh, prefer just doing NPM, he shows you how to do it right here. I like Docker, it keeps things separate, secure, nice and safe. Now if you're like, I don't know what Docker is, Chuck, and um, please help me. I've got a Docker video right over here. Go watch it, get set up, get it installed. It's very easy, it's on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And here in Windows, you do have to run it inside WSL, which is another thing. If you don't know what that is, that'll blow your mind. But I wanna watch my WSL instance right here, and my video on that is right here. It's essentially Linux on Windows. We'll first use the git clone command to clone the repo deep research. You will need Git installed, but thankfully on most uh, installations like Mac and Linux, it'll already have Git there. If you don't got it, go get it. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I'm gonna CD or jump into the deep research directory. And then inside here, I'm gonna add all the stuff I need to create my Docker container. You don't need to know what Docker is, just follow along but it will help to know what it is to kind of understand what I'm doing here. First, we'll create an environment file. We'll type in nano, the best text editor in Linux, period. We'll specify our file, .env.local. And we're gonna add two things here, our firecrawl API key and our OpenAI API key. I'll add mine right now. Just like this, firecrawl underscore key. Have that equal within parentheses your API key. I'm gonna grab mine, copy that key, paste it here. And then just under that, my OpenAI underscore key. Equal my key. Where'd you go, buddy? There you are. That's all we need for that file. We'll hit Control X, Y, Enter to save. Type in ls, you should see our file right, actually no, you won't see it, it's hidden. Type in ls-al and you'll see it right here. That's what that dot does before a file, it'll hide the file. Now we're gonna create what's called a Docker file. So we'll do nano Docker file, just like this. And I'm gonna copy and paste this config in. This is essentially describing a Docker container we're about to build. I will have all this config below in a nice little blog post on blog.networkchuck.com. We'll hit control X, Y, enter to save. And then one last thing, we're gonna create our Docker compose file. Type in nano docker-compose.yml. We'll paste this config in. Again, this will be below. Control X, Y, enter to save. And then because we're doing environment variables a bit differently, we will have to change one file. Type in ls where you are right now. We're gonna change the package.json file. So we'll do nano package.json. This won't be scary, I promise. It's gonna be one little file right here, the start tsx environment file, blah, 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 blah. We're just gonna backspace this a bit to where it looks like this, just like this. Hit control X, Y, enter to save. And now we're ready to go, actually. All we have to do is run one command. We'll type in docker compose. You may have to do a sudo at the beginning of this. I'll go ahead and do that right now, just in case. Docker compose, run dash dash rm. This will actually remove the container once we're done with it. And then we'll call the container deep research. Ready, set, go. Oh, crap, we got an error. Oh, you know what? I don't know what it is. We messed up our package.json file. Let's jump back in there real quick. Package.json. It's not proper JSON. We didn't put a comma. You probably saw this, didn't you? We didn't put a comma after our start right here. There we go, proper JSON. Control X, Y, enter to save. Hit the up arrow to run that command one more time. And, come on, it's working. Exciting. What would I like to research? Hmm, let's research the same thing. I would like to know what is better or what animal is better, cats or dogs. And then it will control the breadth of the research. Defaults to four, we'll just do four. And then depth. So the first one was how wide, second one's how deep. What does that mean exactly? I'm not sure, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done the breadth and the depth on this yet. We're playing with it right now. And it's creating the research plan. It's gonna ask, actually ask me the questions that ChatGPT just did earlier. Similar ones. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All of the above. Let's do data-driven, scientific. Sure. Okay, and now it's researching. Coffee break while it does it. Now, I'm not sure if I've exhausted my API key usage. Let me go look. Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't done anything, I haven't paid anything. This is all free. Oh, it's doing it. This is so cool. Doing things on your own hardware, which this is not our own hardware, but it's open source and we're doing it in the command line. It just feels cooler. OpenAI keeps things very mysterious. You don't really know what's happening. Here you do, this, the code is all there. Now I'm not sure if I mentioned what Firecrawl was for if I did. Ah, my rate limit was exceeded. This is why I would probably wanna run this locally, which you can do that. But I just found this like an hour ago, so I can't do it right now. Check it out, all the URLs. It did some research, and <laughs> we're about to see our results. Now it said it saved it to report.md. We'll look at that here in a second, but I think, yeah, here's all the research right here in Markdown, right here in our terminal. What was the conclusion? I don't wanna read all this. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it here, folks. Dogs are better. Take that, suckers. I am a dog person. Sorry, cat lovers. 
Let's see. <laughs> Let's see if ChatGPT said the same thing. <laughs> it said dogs. Yes, but check it out. I mean, the research is cool. So obviously ChatGPT has a, a prettier interface, right? We've got links right in here in line. Definitely pretty wordy, but I think we've got a similar output and we can control how deep and you know how wide this goes as well on the open source side. What do you say we do one more thing? And by the way, let me know <laughs> how you feel about that conclusion. Do you agree? You know, it's hard not to agree. It's it's AI, it knows more. It can, it can now research way better than you can, better than I can. Let's do an age old question. And by the way, to run this again, we'll do the same command just like this. Which OS is better for IT professionals? Mac, Linux, or Windows? <laughs> Spicy, right? Let me ask the same question over here. Let's say system administration and network engineering and cybersecurity, all of the above. Should the analysis be on uh, cost, licensing, you know, everything? Everything. Answer the same questions. You know, notice it's asking similar questions. I mean, it, we are both using ChatGPT 03 Mini High. Okay, starting research, I will say my command line's a lot faster, although I do reach my uh, rate limits. And I bet the research would be so much better if I didn't hit these rate limits. It is so fun watching the thought process of these AIs. Also, extremely scary. But I don't know. The more I play with AI, which it feels like I've been playing with new things every single stinking day because of releasing things at the speed of light. The more I play with it, the more encouraged I am for us, IT people and humanity in general. It's gonna make us so good at what we do. And that's the question you have to ask yourself, or this is the question you need to ask yourself every single day. How can I use AI to help me do my job better? That's how you're gonna stay ahead in this. Oh, I love me a good AI that takes a long time to answer. Feels good. All right, let's see what, uh... actually I'm gonna show at the same time. So video editor, don't show it yet. Dude, ChatGPT is taking too long. I have to go pee. <sighs> Come on, ChatGPT. It's taking so long. <sighs> I got a meeting with Jeremy Chara. Hurry up. Oh, it's finally done. Okay. And the conclusion. <laughs> I saw it coming. You know what? I agree with this because I do the same thing as an IT pro. Aim to build competency in all three over your career. You'll need all of them. And I'm pretty sure this said the same thing the deep research open source. Yeah, here it is right here. For IT professionals, ah, I'm resizing it. Uh, it's not a single OS decision. It's implementing a hybrid strategy utilizing each system's strengths while utilizing rigorous platform agnostic security practices, blah, blah, blah. You heard it here, folks. Mac, Windows, Linux, use them all. All right, that's the video. Let me know if you tried this. Let me know what you think about the conclusions. And um, that's all I got. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, by the way, this video is sponsored by no one but me and my coffee, networkchuck.coffee. It's also sponsored by my academy, Network Chuck Academy. What is that? I can't tell you. We're still building it, it's still very new, uh, but we're building something fun. And you can actually join right now, it's 12 bucks a month. It's uh, introductory price, nothing crazy. Kind of think of it as a Kickstarter. We're not doing a Kickstarter, by the way, it's not a Kickstarter. It's just, if you wanna come see the videos as we're preparing them, the courses as we're making them, if you wanna get into IT, that's what you're gonna see there. Nothing crazy just yet. Just know I'm about to have a meeting on it right now. Literally after this recording, I'm meeting my business partner to talk about what we're doing. I would love to have you come join me in building this. That's the video. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, real quick note. Just as I'm making this video, Hugging Face said they're coming out with their own agentic framework for Deep Search because they want to, I guess, beat OpenAI. Um, it's pretty cool. You can try it or maybe you can't. It's like not working right now, but Hey, everyone's jumping on this and I can't keep up. So I had to add this. There's my editor, say hi editors. What's up? Hi.